Okay, it's the end of the session. This is Rufus's roadmap to success. Normally Rufus would be here, but we've had to reshoot this one a couple times. So Rufus is taking a siesta over there. Um, basically, we started off the session. He's a pretty low energy dog. So we started off the session uh, by just going over a lot of fundamentals. We went over uh, marker words. Marker word that we're using for him is yes. I'd like you guys to make sure that you have loaded the word. So he's already ahead of uh, things right now, taking a nap. But when he wakes up, uh, walk around. Uh, this is really for your benefit listening right now. She's off camera listening, uh, working. But but you want to do that about six times with a clicker, six times with the uh, marker words, so that when you say yes or click, Rufus is looking at you. One of the reasons the video above didn't work as well as I'd like is we haven't fully loaded that exercise. Loading should be done within the first two or three days maximum, and then after that, you're done. So that's where you're just walking around saying yes, give him a treat, or clicking, give him a treat. Uh, do that throughout your whole house. When you're practicing with your dog, it's really important we have practice with a lot of variety because dogs don't generalize well. So we need to make sure that the dog's um, getting a lot of variety for practice. Um, and also make sure it's not too stimulus rich. Uh, if the environment is too busy, that's going to be harder for the dog to focus. We want to find an environment that is calm at first and what I call leveling up. Then we go to an environment that's a little bit more distracting, a little bit more distracting, a little bit more distracting. We are filming still, correct? Can you see that? I can't, uh, it's showing a weird reflection on that. I just want to yeah. double check, make sure. Okay, we don't have to do this a fourth time. So, um, all right, so after we went over marker words, um, I started showing the Guardian's hand targeting, which they've got a touch cue, but if I don't link it in here, message me and I can sh share with you the, uh, the how to teach your dog to uh, the extra, uh, tutorial video for the touch. Remember, you want to do that with an empty hand and then you're going to put the treat on your hand. So once the dog touches, don't pull your hand away, but message me if I don't have it linked above in your write-up and I'll, I'll link it or I'll send you that video. We also went over cues. Most of us use a variety of the same, uh, different cues for the same action. Come here, come here, over here, come here boy, that sort of thing, and so on. So coming up with a consistent list where we're always using the same words really makes it easier for him. So come up with a list and say the word vocabulary to each other if we're using the wrong version of the word. And so if I'm like, come here, and so he says vocabulary, I'm like, oh, thank you, come. And then when the dog arrives, you say the marker word, then give him a treat. So we use the marker word first because we're 100% certain when we're using the marker word. It should come the instant the dog does it or after the dog does the activity within two seconds of them finishing. If I say come and he doesn't come and I repeat it, the more I say it, the less I mean it. So make sure that you're not repeating a cue. If you give your dog a cue and your dog does not respond, that either means your dog needs more remedial training or the environment is too busy or a combination of both. So you want to practice in an easy environment, then go to one that's gradually a little bit more difficult and gradually a little bit more difficult. I call this leveling up. So the first place you should do it is in your home. The second place you would do it would be outside in your backyard. The third place you do it, maybe in your front yard. Fourth place you do it is a little bit away from your house and you can have a pro different levels moving away from there. Anytime your dog struggles or doesn't uh, perform well, back up to a previous level or a previous uh, uh, level of intensity, making it easier, short down the timing or whatever it is until we get uh, find a place where our dog can be successful. Keep training sessions to two or three minute maximum so that, um, and always end on a good one. Now, uh, so the, uh, we also went over uh, celebrating and manners. Teaching dogs manners is all about rewarding them for the things that we want them to do. Most of us reward our dogs for behaviors we do not want, undesirable behaviors as I like to refer to them. I don't refer to a dog being bad for getting in the trash. I'd say it's an undesirable behavior because for the dog it's not bad. You got this box full of great stuff that nobody seems to want and I would love to have and I'm bad for getting into that. It's not bad. That's undesirable. We have to teach the dog not to do that. So um, what we want to do is create that environment like I talked about earlier where it's easy and help the dog practice in that environment and then gradually make it more and more advanced. Um, and eventually get to the point where you can say the cue. Now uh, for uh, manners, if Rufus comes up and he nudges me or paws at me, um, or he drinks my water. Uh, no, but if he's if he's coming and drinking, uh, uh, if he's coming and nudging me, he's kind of demanding some attention. Now he's doing it. He's a pretty chill dog, so he's not as bad as most dogs. But if he does that and he's nudging you or he's putting his chin, he's saying, "Game man, give me some attention." We'd like to teach him the way we'd like him to ask for our attention, and the great way to do that is through a do-over. Ask him to sit one time. If he sits, say your mark word, pet him under his chin, and or his chest or his shoulders, and then pet him, give him the attention that he wants. If you say sit and he doesn't sit then lean back, disengage, go back to uh, designing something, writing a song, watching TV, checking your emails or whatever it is. Playing hard to get works great for dog training as well as for dating. So don't reinforce or say it over and over again. The more you say it, the less you mean it. And then you wait a minute or two and then you try it again. 
Um, after a while, your dog will figure this out. He'll come start sitting in front of you to prepay for attention. And when he does, make sure you say your mark word and pet him. Otherwise, he's going to go back to the other behaviors because those seem to work more consistently. Like I said, most of us are the ones who train our dogs to offer unwanted behaviors because we are more consistent in giving attention by saying stop that than we are for rewarding. Let's do it on a positive basis and be mindful of what we're doing. Now, if I'm petting Rufus when he's jumping up on me, I'm not even aware of it because I'm walking, working on the computer. My partner says, manners, I would just say, oh, my partner just spotted me doing something where I'm not being mindful of what I'm doing. So I stop petting him. Rufus, sit. If he sits, I would say yes, and I pet him under his chin and then go back to when, even if I did it right, you know, my partner's catching me, it just gives me an opportunity to get in a habit of doing it the way that I want to do it. Because people are, un, it's, it's very common for us to reward dogs for times and place things that we don't want them to do. Now, the flip side of that is what I call celebrating, which is just rewarding the dog when it voluntarily offers you the behavior or action that you're looking for when you don't ask for it. So I mentioned in the session that I, uh, for my dogs, if I say happy hour, my dogs go and drink water. How did I teach them to do that? Um, well, every time the dogs would go over and drink water and I would hear the slurping, I would, when they get done, I would say yes and pet them. So the first stage is just after they do it, saying your marker word at the conclusion and then rewarding and giving attention. But after a while, now I'm mindful of it. I want to teach them that happy hour means go drink water. So I see my dog walking to the water bowl. As they're walking towards it, I say happy hour, the cue needs to come before the action. So I say happy hour, then the dog drinks the water, and when it gets done, I say yes, and then I give it a pet. And after enough repetition, I say happy hour, the dog will go drink the water to get the attention. So you can do this for um, stretching, going to the bathroom, coming to you, going to the dog bed, sitting down, giving you eye contact, giving you eye contact on walks is a really powerful one. Um, so when the dog does the thing that you want, by recognizing and rewarding it, and then giving them attention, they're more likely to want to do that again. And after a while, you get in the habit of doing it. You don't even realize the dog walks up to you, you're like, yes, and petting him, and you're continuing to shoot your Roadmap to Success video, and you didn't even miss a beat. But now the dog knows what it can do to make you happy. A lot of dogs have anxiety because we are inconsistent as humans and don't tell them what we want them to do. And we're like angry at them, stop jumping up on me. Well, but when I was a puppy, you jumped up on me, you petted me. And suddenly now you don't like it when I'm this big? Yeah, we're the one that changed, not the dog. So being mindful about what you're doing will go a long ways for that. So use the word celebrate. So if somebody comes in the room and, say, and sees that Rufus just sat down next to me and says celebrate, I'm just going to say yes and pet him. I don't need to know what it is. I'm taking their word for it. Now, when it comes to petting, try to pet under the chin, on the chest, or on the two shoulders. He's okay with people he knows petting up here. But when you're meeting new people, tell them. Have one of these treat pouches and, and don't even wait because he's a good looking dog. Everybody's going to want to pet him. We were at the coffee shop and some woman, just, we walked in and she just walked right up to him. Remember, front facing is confrontational, leaning over is domineering, and then reaching for him when he's turning his head aside is not listening to his lack of consent. So if you see that, just like, oh, would you, you, know, would you like to give him a treat? Most people, oh, I'd love to give him a treat. That's the benefit of having a little treat pouch. Pull out a treat and just say, hey, just if you hold it in your hand flat in front of him. And if he's really spooky, you just say, actually, it's a little bit easier if you hold it to the side. And have them, you know, if you can get them to turn the side, great. Sometimes you can't do that sort of thing. And if he turns his head away or doesn't come and get the treat, they should not be petting him. And if they, they start coming towards him, use the little white lie I told you about a ringworm. And uh, if they get their nose in a stink, that's up to them. That's fine. Your job is to look out for him. And the more you do that, if you do that consistently, he's like, man, if I just look away from people, it, my parents take me away if they keep on trying to come towards me. I don't have to go to a bite or a snarl or a growl or a lunge because my mom and dad are putting me in a safe situation. Remember a bite, uh, uh, not a bite, we don't want to get to a bite, but a snarl, baring teeth, growling, uh, lunging is the dog's way of saying, I disagree or I feel uncomfortable and I want you to go away. Well, I as the guardian can move the dog away myself. So we went over dog body language. Um, for him, if his nose dips down, if he goes from an open mouth to a closed mouth, if he starts panting, if he starts leaning one way or the other, if he gets stiff, if you see him a lot, a lot of white in his eye, those are cutoff signals. He's saying, I don't feel comfortable with that. So when people want to meet him, have them have a, give them a treat right away and ha have them hold it out. And then once they hold it out, tell them he likes being petted here or here. And if you guys are going to have petting him here or here, he's going to feel more comfortable with that. I would also arrange to have your friends come over, people that he hasn't met yet. Uh, arrange, just say, hey, we got a nice bottle of French wine. I'm using that joke for a second time. And uh, can you come over and uh, we're trying to help Rufus meet strangers and have a good experience. 
So they come over and uh, you've given them, leave some treats on the doorstep or somewhere. And then take your Rufus out for a little walk and meet him like halfway down your block. And just like, oh, what a good looking dog. And have them turn the side and hold out a treat like this. Rufus comes up and gets the treat. And then have them hold their hands still. And he comes back hopefully a second time and licks it. Then you can do the hand targeting exercise a little bit. Or they can just reach for, hold their hand out if he touches his nose to their hand. He's saying, yes, I'm interested. And then they reach down and pet him. And then they give him a treat. And they reach down and pet him again and give him a treat. So he's like, Jesus, everybody I know now has these tasty treats and they, they, they wait for me to approach them. Then they pet me a little bit and I get a treat and they pet me a little bit longer and I get a treat. Back and forth, back and forth we go. And then so and then sometimes they come home with us and then they give me more treats and they and you could have your friends. See, when you're get, you know, have guests come over, you're in host mode. If you have a friend come over for this, you could have them walk around the house doing hand targeting. You can teach them to go to the dog bed. You can have them go in and out of every room. Guess who's going to be pretty happy when people come over to your house? Oh my God, I have somebody coming over. I'm going to get all these treats and I get to show off all the exercises that I get to do. Tossing treats on dog beds is really easy. You know, tossing a treat in a room, really easy. Hand targeting. And your friends should probably want you to help you do these things. And so now you accomplish meeting somebody outside. They come inside and he has an even more powerful, positive experience with them. That's going to help with the next person that you meet. Um, okay, we also talked about... Um, um, physical exercise. Now, he's a pretty low-key dog. He doesn't probably need any more exercise, but remember you can use exercise to set him up for success. So before you're going to do the exercise with a click for looks in the video above, or if you're going to meet one of your friends like we just got done talking about, exercise him about a half an hour before the, that's going to arrive. Make sure it's a short piece of exercise, not overdo it, and then um, give him 10, 15 minutes of rest, and then you go out and meet your friend. Um, uh, you can also, uh, let me see, um, more frequent walks that are shorter probably are going to be a little bit better for him. Uh, we can also uh, play fetch if he likes to play fetch. Um, you can play fetch with higher value items. Sometimes the dog's in a mood, so if he brings you a toy, try to set aside what you're doing and play fetch with him a little bit. I say fetch as I throw it. When the dog brings it back to me, I hold a treat out. He drops it. I say yes and put the treat in his mouth, pick it up and throw it again. And don't throw it have to, if you throw it too far away and he doesn't go get it, just throw it two feet away and make the game easier. Remember, level up. Keep it an easy level, then once the dog understands what we're doing, then make it slightly more difficult, the next level, the next level, the next level. Um, all right, so uh, those are forms of physical exercise. Um, uh, while I'm at it, um, while we're going to talk about feeding for uh, mental exercise, he's been itchy today. So you might want to select different type of protein and feed him exclusively lamb for a month. Lamb treats, lamb food, and see does he get less itchy for that. It could be just uh, the time of the year, the change of the seasons, but um, it could be dermatitis, it could be a lot of things. Um, I use salmon oil and I get a pump of that. I pump it on um, food, I put it in a bowl and I swirl it around on dry kibble. Then I put it in the snuffle mat. The snuffle mat is like a, a very short walk. So you feed him twice a day out of the snuffle mat and maybe feed him once a day out of that Omega Paw Tricky Trainer Treat Ball. Now he feels pretty good about himself because he's earning his food. And that makes uh, boost his confidence. And also he needs to put on a little bit of weight. You can get a little of the Stewart's freeze-dried beef liver um, and grind it up and uh, put that on top of, uh, and when you're chopping it up uh, into little bits, remember don't give them too big a piece as a treat. When you chop it into these little pea-sized uh, morsels, the dust that'll be left over, push that off to the side and you'll have little splinters and little sections of it. Throw that stuff into, his, into the container of dog bed in the, in the bag. So every time you scoop it up, you get some of that dust and some of that in there. That'll probably make him more interested in eating. He needs to eat a little bit more uh, food. I'd probably also increase his, uh, his overall food so he's getting paid you know, closer to like four cups a day. Um, he's young, he has wonderful metabolism that I would love to have, but we need to put a little bit more weight on him. Uh, let me see, also getting a lick mat. Get a lick mat with suction cups, get him practice at using that. I would put it near his dog bed so he's licking it while he's on his dog bed. And eventually you get to the point where he's comfortable doing that, then you could start doing that when guests come over. Gives him something to do, the endorphins make him feel good, uh, uh, and also eventually you can start freezing it. Also get him a bunch of chewable items. Chewing is a great way to relieve some stress. So if you get him uh, some bully sticks, some collagen sticks from Best Buddy, like I, or Best Bully like I showed you. Um, get him a cow kneecap like I showed you outside. Tracheas, tendons, pig snout, cow snouts, pig's ears, cow's ears. Um, those are great chewable, ingestible items. And if you give him those sort of things when guests are over, he gets to work out some of his tension on those, which is a great thing. Um, and so I would definitely get him a handful of those. You might get a, like a bag of bully sticks, so you always have some of those available, or some collagen sticks. 
We'll see if he likes the collagen stick. He ate a little bit of it. Uh, if he eats the rest of it when we're gone, uh, when I leave, then he kind of gets in the habit of it habit of that, but that way you have some of those things ready to go or a lick mat. So if a friend drops by unexpectedly, you have some things to do with them. Now for meeting guests, I would have them, your guests meet outside. I would occasionally practice the treat drill around the flagstones like I showed you. Do it on the flagstones with the cars parked there and occasionally have nobody there, but just a pile of treats in the little grass in the area where I was sitting. Then he has to do the find it game and he's sniffing around looking for those treats. And there's, so this is a fun game. So I come out and there's a trail of treats and I go and get a whole bunch of them by the street. Awesome. And then we may go for a little mini walk and we come back. Then have one of your friends come over and maybe have them practice, or you know, if you're gonna have meet a guest, have them meet there. Approach from this, uh, like again, from the five o'clock or the seven o'clock angle. And when your guest, uh, when they come to your guest, tell your guest, be passive. If he sniffs you, don't reach to pet him. Let him sniff you first and wait for, wait for him to come and sniff and walk away, sniff and walk away like twice, and then have him give a treat and then hold their hand out. And if he nudges the hand, then he's saying yes and they can start petting him. But if they reach for him, he turns away or backs away, tell them to stop, pull their arms back and just be passive again. Now in the house, if he's barking at people, we can throw treats on the ground, but just don't only throw them in between, throw them away from him as well. Um, if he's barking, he's saying you're too close. Well, throw a treat further away so that he moves himself away. He doesn't think about it that way as a dog, but we can do that and help manage that for him. Um, also, I um, can't remember if I said it in this video or not, but having friends come and meet him on the block outside. Did I say that in this version of the video? I'm not sure. Definitely the last one. Okay, well, so arrange to have some friends come over. I think I talked about this one, but I'm going to double check. And just have them meet you somewhere on a regular route that you take. And so how, so the idea is you have them, yeah, I'm pretty sure I did, because then we talked about uh, going and throwing the treats on the dog bed and all that, so fun stuff. But have them meet out and about, and then give them treats, and then go for a little mini walk, then come back in and have them toss the treats on the dog beds like we talked about. And he feels more and more comfortable and confident around these new people. Uh, let me see. We also talked about, um, let me see, oh, scent games. We went over Cookie in the Corner. That's the one where we threw the treats. And eventually you're leaving those treats and you're saying, look for it. Now, in the last video that we're not going to show now because, uh, yeah, it got screwed up, uh, but uh, we did the Find It Away. So Find It Away is something I'd like you to practice like once every block on a walk when there's nobody around, no dogs, no... And be mindful of, you know, like the sounds, the hammering construction, the blowing of uh, leaf blowers, stuff like that. So if Rufus is right here, I take him and I see that there's a dog walking down the street. He's at the end of the block. So Rufus, not, or he's not, he's fine with dogs. Let's just some, it's somebody with a stroller and he doesn't like kids and strollers spook him. So when they're really far away, I want to move them away. If I just tug him away, that might create a problem. Or if they come around the corner last minute, I show him I have a treat, I drop it, he gets, and I say, find it. He gets this one. Then I toss one a foot away towards the driveway, away from whatever the boogie is. So then he goes towards, he moved a foot away, and I say yes when he gets it. Then I toss one two feet away and say find it and toss it. And then he goes and gets that one, then I throw one four feet away. I just moved him like seven to ten feet away from the street. And then we can allow the baby stroller to pass by. We manage the situation for him without him needing to. But we want to practice when we don't need to. Remember, emergency is not a time to practice. Practice is not an emergency. When you're on regular walks, have one of these tree pouch full of treats, and every once in a while, find it, find it, find it, find it. And get in practice of moving down people's driveways. So that way, when somebody does come, it's a practice behavior. He's comfortable doing it. He knows what to do, and he's happy to do so. Right, Rufus? Now he's like going to wander around a little bit. Okay, um, let me see. So he's stretching, so you can say yes and scratch his butt right there. If that's one of those things you want to do. He's going to the dog bed. Yes. And uh, so that's the benefit of that dog bed. Now remember, um, I would have a, a floor mat that you put in your living room, or your dining room, excuse me. And, I, I, and uh, if you, because right now, one of his guardians gives him a little bit of people food at times. And so he, I think, wants to get the rest of that people food, which I don't blame him. They probably eat better than I do. And so what you want to do is help him practice it. Now, remember, we want to practice in the easy environment and gradually work our way up. So for this one, what we would do is maybe, uh, there we go. We would maybe uh, put the floor mat there and just throw a treat on it and say reservations and then throw the treat. When he steps on it, we say yes, and then he licks up the treat. Wait for him to vacate it. Do that about 10 or 12 times. Do that maybe three times the first day. So now he's pretty comfortable going over there and getting the, uh, going to the dog bed. Eventually you want to say reservations and point, and then he goes there and uh, when you give him the cue and the motion, then you say yes and give him the treat. First we throw it to get him to go there, then we tell him to go there and reward him after he does the action. We get to that point, let's start practicing having him sit there while we're eating. But sitting down and having food at the table is way too big of a jump. So I would tell him reservations, he goes to reservations, and I and say yes and give him a treat, then tell him to sit. He sits, yes and give him a treat, 
take one step away, shuffle one step towards this side away from the floor mat and then go right back to him and say, yes, give him a treat. Repeat that three to five times. Then take two steps away. Go right back to him, say yes, give him that treat while he's sitting down. Then eventually three steps, four steps, eventually get to where your chair is. Sit down in your chair, stand up right away, go back and say yes and give him that treat. Then sit down in your chair for one second, two seconds, three seconds. Work your way up to the point where you can go sit down in the chair and wait here for like 60 seconds and he's just completely sit, content sitting there because there's no food on the table. We're just practicing and helping him establish the behavior. Then maybe we put flatware and uh, uh, silverware on the, on, the, uh, on the table. And we just have the sound of forks hitting the plate and the knife hitting the plate, but there's no actual food. So the uh, knife hits the plate and then we go over, yes, and give him a treat. And eventually we do two of those, nice to give him a treat, three of those. And eventually he gets to the point where he's like, whatever, sounds don't mean that anything other than I should sit here and I'll eventually get a treat. Then eventually maybe we microwave a piece of roast beef. Now we introduce the smell of food, but it's not an actual meal. We're not actually planning on eating it. We can eat it if you want to. But we cut it in half and we put it on our plates and we practice playing with our food. And every once in a while we get up and go over and give him a treat. And after a while, then he gets the treat at the end of that. And so he smells the roast beef and sees us doing this. We're eating the piece of roast beef. And then he, at the end of the meal, I get a treat. And uh, eventually then maybe we do it for a light meal where maybe it's some takeout food. So we're not, you know, there's, it's not so much production. But you work up gradually to the point where you're eating a meal. When you get done, you go over and give him a treat. Now, if you want to give him some of your human food, put it off to the side, put it in a plate or a bowl, put it in the microwave and leave it sit in the microwave, not on, but just so it's a, you know, not going to get flies. And then give it to him his next meal in his bowl. Now, he is an underweight dog, so I'd like to see his guardian um, feeding him uh, three times a day. I think I talked about this earlier. Um, but put some of that sewage-free dyed dust in with the food. I'm all, I'm all mixed up because I've done this video three times. I can't remember what I said and what I haven't said. Um, but uh, So feeding him more often. And then if he, as soon as he walks away, pick up the bowl, dump it empty, put the empty bowl back down. Or if we're using a snuffle mat, just put the snuffle mat up. And then, uh, and then if you're using that, uh, the better quality food that needs to be refrigerated, pull it out about an hour before you're going to feed him so it goes to room temperature. If you're putting it in the bowl, put it in some hot water, swirl it around, make it a little bit of a stew. Temperature is more important to dogs than taste. They'll probably be interested in eating that. But as soon as he walks away, dump it in the bowl and put the empty bowl back down so he recognizes that bowl is empty. And don't encourage him, you know, or say if he doesn't eat it, that's totally fine, man. You do you. But eventually we want to get to the point where he's eating more. I'd probably be close, feeding him closer to like four cups a day. Um, let me see, what else do we go over? We went over dog consent, um, so petting under the chin, on the chest, or the two shoulders, um, and watching out for body language. So for him, if his nose is low, if he goes from open mouth to a closed mouth, those are pretty big indicators he's uncomfortable, he turns away, a lot of freezes, a lot of whale in his eye, uh, whale eye, a lot of white in the eye. If he gets stiff and his tail curls up, if he's leaning away from things or towards things, those are indications if he's breathing heavy or holding his breath. So try to be mindful and watch him to see what, he's, what his body language is doing. If you start to recognize the signals before he barks and you get him away from there, he doesn't have to do it. Most of us, we don't think of the reactivity until he's barking and lunging. But usually they're giving the signals before that. Now it can be very quick, but watch and be mindful of that. And again, for the encounter that we had at the, at the uh, coffee house, if somebody's in there and you're close proximity and they're looking at him, you're like, oh, he loves treats. Would you like to give him a treat? I'd love to give him a treat. Okay, can you just hold it out in your hand flat and give a treat? And then if he's a little bit leans towards them, then you're like, oh, he's not comfortable. Here, give him another one. Give him another one. People love giving dogs treats. I've never had once anybody say, no, I'm good. And so do that three or four times. And then if they go to pet him and he turns his head aside, so, you know, he, sometimes he's a little gun shy. He, he's a little bit better if you turn to the side. Um, and some people don't want to do it. That's totally fine. And if they don't want to do it, take him outside and wait for that person to go and then go back in the store. Uh, but a lot of people will turn sideways and then tell them he loves it on his chest. And then, you know, have him give another treat and then they pet him on his chest. And, you know, and I've seen other people, the dog's petting him and I'm sitting there giving the dog treats while he's getting petted from somebody else. Just creating that positive association. Be proactive about it. And then um, remember, if he, if he growls or bares his teeth, he's saying, I'm uncomfortable, we're going to increase the distance. Do not ask him to sit multiple times if he's uncomfortable. If he wants to move away, let him move away. Reward him for moving away. That's what we want him to do. I don't want you barking. I want you moving away. So if like he sees somebody and he moves away from them, yes, go over there and pet him if you don't have a treat. So you're saying, hey, if you don't feel comfortable with people and you move away, boy, that's a rewardable thing. I really like that. Would you like to come and get a little camera time, Rufus? You just got to drink water. This is the Rufus. Yes. Um, and, uh, but, and once he gets to know people, he's comfortable, but standing up um, and also keep track. If he does bark at somebody, 
what was going on? What were the sounds that are nearby? Were there a lot of fast moving objects? Was the person wearing a belt? Uh, a belt? Uh, was the person wearing a hat? Did they have a beard? Were they wearing dangly earrings? Were there, uh, was there anything that's unusual? And after a while you start noticing, you know, every time he hangs out with, you know, uh, yeah, you cannot have my donuts. I know you still want my donut. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. Um, but if you notice that every time with somebody with big oversized glasses, he doesn't like it, then arrange to have that. Somebody with big oversized glasses, yes. So he looks at the people with the glasses and he gets kind of what we did in that video again, the click for looks. Let me see, what else do we go over? Um, da, da, da. I'm, I'm, I've done this so many times I'm forgetting. Um, I think that's just about it. Um, if you wanna teach him uh, to go from room to room, if that if the floor right there from where it goes to carpet to, to wood is the, is the kitchen, I would just say kitchen. Yes, when he steps in the kitchen and then licks it up. And so then go to your dining room. Dining room, yes, when he steps in there and then he looks up the treat. Eventually, you can direct him to go to a dog bed and give each dog bed a different name and each room a different name so he can tell him where to go. Um, the door, um, we went over, uh, the, right now, the chime of the doorbell um, gets him worked up because that means that somebody's about to come in. So what I told the guardians to do is record an audio of that uh, recording of the doorbell and then basically play it at a, uh, like if this is the dog bed right here, I would just uh, have them uh, be holding it here and I ask them, like, yes, they ring and I drop it. I would actually throw it on the dog bed. He steps on the dog bed. Yes. And gets a treat. Then I pull out another one and I say ring. Yes. Treat. So we're having the treat right there and he's looking at the dog bed and you're just basically dropping it right there, but he's hearing the ring. Now, if he gets aroused, we're playing it too high a volume, do it at a lower volume and then gradually we increase that volume level until it's full ring and he runs to the dog bed. So now, we're, we've done it without the presence of an actual guest there. And then you guys do it yourselves. When you guys come up the door, ring, and then he goes to the dog bed, go run over there and give him a treat or have somebody there. You know, if you have, when, when you do have guests come over the first time, I'd have somebody standing right next to the dog bed. So here's the ring. He goes to the dog bed. Yes, you give him a treat. The, the door opens. Yes, I give him a treat. You don't have to, I guess, say yes each time you could. And then just have the person just giving a treat so fast that he's staying there as opposed to running and get the guest. But if it's an actual guest, he's probably going to run over there. That's that's still my donut. Um, that's too intense. So do it with one of your one of the guardians. So it's like, yes, I know. I mean, I love you. I know you, but I'm not super excited to see you. And if it's when you come home and he's too excited, then walk out the door, wait for a minute, and then ching, and ring the doorbell and do it. Recreate the situation, make it easier. And again, after a while, you get to the point where he hears that doorbell chime and he's going to the dog bed because that means he's going to get a treat. Um, all right, let me see. Uh, for forms of exercise. Um, uh, playing fetch is a good thing. Dog skiing, uh, running is fine. Make sure you let him sniff on walks as long as it's safe to do so. But there's also that mental stimulation. Cookie in the corner. Um, I have a video for that one. If you forget how to do that one. Um, look at Google scent games. Find two other scent games that you can practice in the house. Those are nice things to do, like when you're on a Zoom call or something along those lines. Um, also training. Training is a great way to drain energy. So if each one of the guardians decides, I'm going to tra train him to go to the dog beds. I'm gonna do it for two minutes, once a day, and the other guardians, I'm gonna do it in the morning, you're doing the evening. So twice a day you're doing these things, or whatever it is, and then once you get to the point where you say, Paris, and he goes to the dog bed, yay, we've achieved it. Now we can teach him to bang your dead, or whatever it is, and then twice a day. That drains a lot of energy for dogs. So if we uh, you know, need to have him calm or quiet, like right now he's snoozing because this is taking a lot of out of him. So we have a Zoom call and we give him some good exercise ahead of time, we set him up for success. Um, let me see, um, get a snuffle mat, get a lick mat, lick mats, make sure you get in the lick mat, put it over there by the dog bed and have him practice that a couple times without any guests arrived. And then eventually have your guest meet you, do the treat trail down the deal, take a little mini walk and on the walk, I like to give the guest the, uh, the treat pouch and then have the guest, give the leash to the guest halfway through and have the guest sit and, and just say, every time he does what you want, just say yes and give him a treat. So now he's practicing listening to the guest outside in a walk. He's being rewarded for doing that. Then we come inside. So we got a treat trail, met the guest, went for a walk, listened to the guest, got more treats, came inside. Then the guest walked around throwing the treats on my dog beds and all the other stuff. Man, I love it when guests come over. And so you make those into positives. A lot of people, we run away from things where our dog doesn't perform well. But uh, and sometimes we have to. That's management. That's, that's a good thing to do. But try to be mindful of what that is and come back to it and repractice that activity when you have some time to work on it. So that way you can eventually work towards getting your dog over that particular phobia or fear. 
Um, now, if, um, if there's anything I've forgotten in this third or fourth version of this video, please let me know. I'm here for you. I don't care if it's six months from now or six minutes from now. Please text me. If I don't hear from you, I assume everything's going great. I want to be here for you. I've got all these videos I'm happy to share with you if I need to. Um, and uh, let me see. Um, hopefully, we'll come back in about a month and we'll start working on some other stuff. Rufus, would you like a couple treats? Oh, Rufus. He's got to be bribed. Um, and that's why that petting, uh, you know, asking him to do things before you pet him might really help. Yeah, you walked right past that treat. Yes. Um, so uh, make sure you let me know if you have any questions. Um, sit. Yes. Uh, well, before I get to it, we were at the, uh, the video above. We were at Jurassic Magic. Magic. And this is where I got this amazing donut that I took a bite out of the first one. And it's even better this time. Um, so if you're mid-city, go to Jurassic Magic and get one of the chocolate donuts. They're really tasty. Or chocolate uh, uh, croissant. Anything you want. Mm -hmm. Great coffee, too. Great coffee as well. Great iced tea. And great people. All right, this is my buddy Rufus, and this is Rufus's Roadmap to Success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it. Sit. Yes.